to celebrate uh, the publishing by Pickman Press, the Diary of Martha Ballard, 1785 to 1812. A magnificently, I believe you will find, produced book. And I think now and from time on will prove to be very historically significant for all of us. Um, I'd like to begin uh, by introducing the McCoslins, uh, who are formerly from Kittery, Maine. Uh, they now live in Virginia Beach. Uh, they were researching family histories at the Maine State Library when they came across the diary in 1978. The McCoslin forebears, two McCoslin brothers, were mentioned in the diary and were part of a group of seven families that settled in Augusta in 1760. The McCausland's were given uh, a photocopy of the two pages that reference the McCausland's, and the challenge from the State Library staff here was hot, try now to interpret this. Well, Robert and Cynthia picked up the challenge. They've been working on the complete translation from back in 19, from 1978 up until about a year ago. At some point, they were working on it, I'm sure, 24 hours a day. It's been a dedication, a love of theirs, and I think you will find the excellence of their work indicative of all those years of dedication and hard work to the Ballard Diary. So with that said, uh, I'd like to introduce to you Robert McCoskey. Egypt 
Terry sitting back there uh, on a, a few of those books anyway. Still a man. Uh, we, when we first started off, the whole idea after we had seen the diary was to get it in handwritten form where we ourselves could uh, more or less scan it and sift material out of it. However, uh, while we were, or while, yeah, while we were uh, photostatting a copy here at the library, uh, I got a call one day uh, that I was to report to a Harry in the law offices. Well, I know very little about copyright law and probably even less about fooling with the antiquities. And I was a little bit nervous sitting there doing this photostatin anyway. However, I went over to the law offices and found out, of course, that uh, the Harry was either Harry, and she too was, uh, of course, interested in the diary. And before I left there, I was firmly convinced that this book had to be published. Nothing would have it for what it was put out for the public. And uh, when I left the office, I was a budding author. Um, I still intended only to do a verbatim transcription. That is just exactly what Mrs. Ballard wrote, uh, with no guesses, uh, no footnotes, no index or anything else. And I thought we'd be fortunate if we ever got through it. Um, we did. And but en route, we got talked into also including an index that uh, includes some, I believe, about 750 surnames. Uh, I think it's a total of about 38,000 entries in the uh, index. And of course, there is a subject index that includes medicines, uh, occupations, uh, ship sailings, that sort of thing. That should serve a purpose uh, for quite a uh, wide variety of uh, purposes or uh, people. Uh, I don't believe I have a whole lot else to say. Cindy? That's my wife hiding in the back. <laughs> Young fella with his eyes stuck in the camera there is my youngest son. He's also brought <laughs> He's about set at all. <laughs> he sat at one end of the room with a computer, and I sat at the other end. And if he told me he didn't like what I did, I hollered and screamed at him and did it his way. <laughs> a little interesting piece here. When we decided we were going to get it published, and we had made contact with Pick and Press and discussed it with them, we found that one of the things that was going to slow us way down was the cost of this thing. However, Lou had indicated that we'd get it done regardless of the cost, but he was a little worried about it himself. And the original transcript that I had done was in uh, handwriting. And to get it converted and put into uh, on diskettes like they have to have it into a computer, uh, he estimated that somewhere around three to four thousand dollars to pay to have this done. And this young one volunteered to do the typing herself. Of course, she didn't realize that there was over six million characters in the book, letters. And uh, that's just one time through. That doesn't count for proofing and redoing and all of that. But she did it. I don't type. And uh, I'd stand in the background and fan her to bring her coffee. But together we got the thing out, and needless to say, I'm pretty pleased myself with the uh, thing is out. Uh, the one thing that uh, I've got to say is that uh, Edith Harry signed my book for me, and she had a note in there that said, now Mrs. Bell can speak for herself. Uh -huh. <laughs> I think that's nice. I might add that 
for anyone interested in the diary itself, I would strongly advocate reading A Midwife's Tale. It really gives you the historical times and it tells you a lot about these, these people. Whereas Mrs. Ballard's diaries, they're just daily entries and it really doesn't go into a whole lot of detail. We talked with Laurel Ulrich and she really was pleased that we were going to do this. As a matter of fact, she was surprised that anyone else was working on this. I'm glad it happened the way it did, and I'm real happy that it's done and it's there for everyone to use from now on. I don't guess really they'll have to get out the original diary anymore, which will save it for a long time too. Thank you. Robert, you're a lot luckier than I am. If my wife yells and screams at me, means I don't get my way. Yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, this afternoon, uh, Laurel Ulrich will not be able to be with us. Uh, Laurel is the Pulitzer Prize winner for her book on the Midwives' Tale. Um, but we do have Tony who is going to present a few words on her behalf. Tony. Laurel called me last evening to ask me to extend her regrets to this gathering for her being unable to join us today. However, but the, the pressure of, uh, of some personal things, plus uh, she has a cold and she felt that she really couldn't uh, uh, be with us today. However, uh, through the magic of modern technology, through a fax machine, she has sent us her words, which I have the uh, very great pleasure to read to you right now. Congratulations to Cynthia and Robert McCausland, Picton Press, the Maine State Library, and all those responsible for the published transcription of Martha Ballard's diary. When Mary Hobart entrusted her great-great-grandmother's diary to the Maine State Library, she asked for a typewritten transcription of the original. Evidentially, the library provided Dr. Hobart a copy of the, expert, of the excerpts Charles Evelton Nash made for his History of Augusta. Mary Hobart wrote to thank the library, but added, I shall never feel certain about the completeness as much material is, material is doubtless omitted. Yes, indeed. All of us here today know how much has been left out. In the closing pages of A Midwife Tale, I acknowledge the value of Natchez's transcription and of Edith Perry's work in seeing to its publication. But I noted the promise made to Mary Hobart is yet unfulfilled. When I wrote these words, I didn't realize that Robert McCausland was already busy transcribing the diary. With all of you, I congratulate Robert and Cynthia on their fine work. They have not only made a lasting contribution to Maine history, they have made good an old debt. I hope the shades of Mary Hobart and Martha Ballard are here to put an invisible X somewhere in the margins of the diary. I'm sorry I cannot be with you to join in the celebration. Laurel Ulrich. We're pleased to have with us here this afternoon also is Edith Harry who is a former state law librarian, and the one involved most, perhaps, in assuring the publication of Nash's, Nash's History of Augusta back in the 1960s, I believe. The history included uh, some brief uh, selected entries of the diary. Uh, Charles Nash was the first historian to use the diary and understand its importance and its significance. Up until that point, they were rather thought of as sort of inane jottings. Uh, Edith had read a draft of Nash's history, understood its importance, and it was her efforts that led to its publication. 
So we have much to thank Edith for bringing us to the point that we are in having this important documentary of the life of Martha Ballard. So Edith, would you please come forward? Kennebec Historical Society, whom I presumably represent, although Tony is right here, very happily joins in celebrating the publication of Martha Ballard's diary and applauds the extraordinary labor of two uncommon people, Cynthia and Bob McCosman. In translating it for publication, if you've looked at the pages, you know that it is literally a translation. And I love the fact that this is the McCosman translation. Any other I think will never exist. They have indexed it so it has utmost usability and it makes its remarkable contents accessible to everyone. Think about the diary. We know about its passage from one generation to the next down to the great and great granddaughter, Dr. Mary Hobart. Twice she loaned the diary to Captain Nash. I think they'd started the Kennebec Historical Society and probably Captain Nash thought the best thing to do would be to write a history. At any rate, he knew about it and he secured the loan of it twice. The first time she chided him for not returning it to Boston when he promised to send it back. And the second time when she realized that he was really taking large parts of it for a book, she let him have it longer. But when he sent it back, she said, uh, I'm glad it was helpful to you but I am sorry about the ink spots on the pretty covers. But as I am rather callous about such matters myself, I forgive it in you. Perhaps Captain Nash and Dr. Hobart would both be pleased to know that in 1989, the Northeast Document Conservation Center dry cleaned all the pages, and the ink spots have disappeared. <laughs> Captain Nash died, however, before his book was finished, and it was unpublished until 1961. Thirty years before that, however, in 1931, again one of these wonderful genealogists whom the old timers remember, Mrs. Ethel Conant of Augusta, who used the genealogical collection of the State Library all her life, was a friend of Dr. Hobart's and she persuaded her to make a gift to the State Library of the document. And that's how we happen to uh, have it in the library's possession now. It became known rather quietly to a rather limited clientele, but it had never gone much beyond that. In 1978, as they have already described, the McCoslands on the genealogical trail for McCoslands discovered in Mr. Nash's index pertinent references, and they found some of them embedded in footnotes to the ballad diary. And when I discovered their interest, it never occurred to me for a moment that they wouldn't do it. They wondered how I could have thought for 14 years that they were doing it. But uh, there was something about them that just made me know they were going to do it. It does seem strange, though, that the night someone had called me up to congratulate me in a sort of way on Mrs. Ulrich's winning the Pulitzer Prize for the book, that the very same evening the uh, McCausland's called from Virginia Beach. They knew nothing of Mrs. Ulrich's effort, and uh, it was very interesting that on that particular night, lightning struck twice. <laughs> May have taken a little while, but here it is. Mrs. Ulrich spent almost all of the 1980s researching and producing her marvelous story, The Midwife's Tale. To read it is to illumine the diary itself. I think together Mrs. Ballard and Dr. Hobart and Mrs. Ulrich and Bob and Cynthia McCausland have created a sort of cottage industry for the Augusta area. And the, the next chapter may be the Khan Levitt, Levitt film version. I wonder if uh, the Augusta Development Commission is really aware of all this activity. In the uh, event of all these things, the Kennebec Historical Society has taken on new vigor, spurred by such remarkable recreations of our history. The original Nash papers have recently been acquired, at least some of them, and one welcome one located the Ballard burying ground. There has been a great deal of speculation as to where Mrs. Ballard was buried. 
I've got to have the book in order to say this. <laughs> but if my hand rests lightly on this book, I somehow feel the pulses of Cynthia and Bob beating just a little bit faster today. I feel the hundreds of pulsations that Mrs. Ballard must have felt through the years. But strongest of all, I feel the heartbeat, the very vibrant heartbeat of Martha herself, who today shares her tale with all of us. 